The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to tonight's session. We're going to listen to the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States of America, Jerome Powell. So we're going to try to understand what he's signaling. He doesn't, you know, these guys have to be, and women, uh, I'll talk about who's been in the past, but the idea here is that the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank and, and also the chairman of the Federal Open Market Committee. That's what this FOMC stands for. It's a technical name for the committee that determines the interest rates. And as you can imagine, these are the, um, you know, some of America's best and brightest, or any country's central bank, usually, unless it's Turkey, of course, is comprised of the country's, you know, best thinkers on the subject of monetary policy, which is, and that's you know, it's not the Secretary of Agriculture, you know what I mean? This guy spent his lifetime growing corn. He's an expert in, you know what I mean? He knows what he's talking about. In this world here, I'll give you an example. Except for Alan Greenspan in my life, well, my lifetime, your lifetimes, I should say, uh, who served for, I don't know, a better part of 20 years. The rest of all his, you know, his predecessors were uh, academics, Mrs. Yellen, Dr. Bernanke, Dr. Yellen, Bernanke had just recently won the Nobel Prize, by the way, a couple of years ago. He's been out of office for some time, but he won the Nobel Prize. And he was followed by, um, now he's the, the secretary of the, uh, it's Jerome Powell, very, very considered a very firm hand on the tiller. After all, he's he's navigated, yes, up until the pandemic, that was the easygoing economy was ticking over nicely, but, you know, not overheating. We had, whole generation really hadn't seen inflation. And now, I mean, in his term, you know, inflation picked up radically after the governments of the world pumped zillions and trillions and billions of money into the pockets and, 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 uh, and balance sheets of corporations and citizens all over the developed world, causing, not surprisingly, uh, a rise in prices with all that demand suddenly without the proper, you know, adjustments and, and creation of a more wealth creating machinery and labor and, you know, what have you. 
it drove prices up and right, trying to drive it up and drive them up. They did. The United States had top 10 percent. It was it's still very high in, in many parts of Europe. But in the U.S., it was 10 percent is, is, is very high. And the last time we saw 10 percent was under Reagan after he took over from Carter in the Vietnam and the cost of the Vietnam War came home to roost. So um, that's what happens. He's, they're going to announce it here. The expectation is I don't even I don't even see the expectation here. Um, it's the minutes of the meeting. I'm sorry. It's the meeting of the minute. It's the meeting minutes. It's not a. It's not the actual in, interest rate report. But I want to keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, that we're going to look principally at. Um, Oh, my mistake, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, a little over. No, no, a little over. Yeah, this is right. We're going to look principally not at the indices, although we will look at the indices. We're going to look at the basic currency pairs. Idea here being that a, a, a something that would drive the market. We'll talk about why I'm so vague about that in a moment. Oh, yes. You know, I'm getting ahead of myself. I always get excited during live events, and I neglected to to do the courtesy of introducing myself and welcoming you to today's show. Of course, my name is Seth Julian. I'm the uh, Chief Capital Markets Analyst here at Bankso Trading. And I'm, I'm 66 years old. I've been trading the market for about 53 years now. Um, uh, I have uh, advanced education in finance, tr international trade and economics. And I've been working in the capital markets myself personally and uh, as a, as a uh, licensed and, uh, broker for decades. So I've been around, and just just to to to, to 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 you know what do they call it today? A spoiler alert. I've lost plenty of money. Okay, I have made more than I've lost, which thank goodness is a is a, is a, is a great you know fun aspect of this business for me and many others. But rest assured, okay, it's, this this game is as much about learning how to lose properly as it is learning how to gain properly. And don't think either of them are so obvious because they're not. Um, and if you join us for this series and talk to your brokers and ask to, to, to learn more, we have what to teach you about these different aspects of market trading. We are a trading firm. We're a firm that's established for the purpose of affording you the very best tools and the very best support and training and, and guidance in how to trade. We're not an investment house where you park your money and, 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 uh, and forget about it. That, you know, that's that that's other people's business. Our business is trading and we are good at it, but we don't always win. OK, let's just make that clear. Everybody loses. There's no endeavor that takes place, be it sports or, or professions or, or hobbies or arts or crafts, or what have you, where expertise and success has not met failure. OK, that's just part of the game. And in our business, if we can learn from losses, which we will have and gain something from them, how not to enter, why not to think this and think that instead, or identify this before you jump, whatever it is, then you've gained and you've, you've, you've increased your odds of success. That's what this is about. That's why trading is so much fun. It's so exciting. It's, 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 a, it's a very personal um, edifying, if you will, meaning a, 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 it, it helps, it, it builds your character for me. I'm speaking personally here. I'm not speaking on behalf of the company for that, but a lot of people would agree with me. Anyway, let's get back to the setup and what we're up to here. In the event that a question comes up or Mr. Powell says something that it rattles the market, and we're going to see it here. These are one-minute charts. of This is like why, why you know, the, the EKG, you know, clicking away in a patient's uh, a bed in a hospital. This will register the slightest, uh, okay? You can see already, this, this, there's already sensibility that the dollar is going to weaken. Right, these are one-minute charts now. So we're only going back, uh, you know, today. I don't know what this is. I, I, I'll have to go to the. Uh, I'm using, by the way, the MT5 platform. We're going back to. Uh, you see what I mean? Annoying. Here we go. Uh, Eight o'clock, half an hour ago. Okay, so in the last half hour, there's been some. Nervous up, you know, we sensibilities or predating weakening of the U.S. dollar. 
My feeling on these matters is these are the amateurs and these are the newbies and the wannabes trying to second guess or outguess the market. We don't listen to them because this basically it's an it's an odd variant. It's not the crude oil inventory report. It's not the NFP. It's not a real report in the sense. This is a what do they call it? Research paper. It's a funny symbol on the uh, site. What do they call it? Um, it's a report. I guess it's, I guess it's the same thing, but it's not the same as like in the inventory report or the or the uh, you know, the NFP. Once once something happens, we'll see it. We won't see these little tiny, these are little tiny movements, keep in mind. If there's a ha-ha, a boom movement, if there's a candlestick with, with a little juice behind it, and we see it, we may think about getting in. Let me tell you about these trades. They ain't long-lived, okay? We're not going to be trading in large portions of our, of our uh, account in these trades. Because they can be high volatility. By the way, for those of you who are thinking, well, I'll put my stops in. This is a, we're riding this baby bareback. There's no saddle on this job. You're going to have to hold on and ride bareback because you're flying without a net. There's way too much, this possibly, I shouldn't say. By the way, let me, I don't want to overspeak my, my, um, my welcome here, but uh, just let me outline the, 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 the kind of risks, the possibilities that can go on here. One is, he does say something or hint something that the market understands to be very, uh, let's say, bad for the dollar. Let's assume these trends continue. We'll see it, not in these little tiny bars, but a, a whammo. Someone will jump. I personally don't like to jump in on that first bar. It's one-minute bars. If it has a, if it's enough energy to sustain for two minutes, I might get in. That, that's my personal approach to these affairs. You'll have to determine your own, your own emotionality, your own risk uh, appetite, etc. But Trading prior to the release of whatever we're talking about is, is a fool's game. I mean, who, who, are, who are these people? Do, do they have access to the report? Are they privy to? No. no they don't. So we're not really going to follow them. Um, let me say, I, I, I interrupted myself. How do you like that for discourtesy? Um, or maybe equal opportunity uh, bullying. I don't know how you look at that. Uh, Yes, there's only one protocol in the room, ladies and gentlemen, and that is that you're asked to post your questions and post your questions in the in the question area. I'll try. I'll look at. I'll give that a glance every now and then, and 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 try to answer them in real time. So please feel free to, you know, we don't denigrate or derogate anybody who asks a question here. We respect it. It's a sign of commitment to the process of learning this 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 game, and, um. Feel free, uh, you know, if, uh, if it's something that's not your main, I'll talk to you offline or, or refer you to, to, to your broker or what have you. But for the time being, I, I, please feel free to ask anything you, you care to choose. Um, oh, yes, the, the, the possible risk profiles we're, we're facing here. One is, and hopefully, it, it, hopefully, not necessarily, this is not as reliable. Let me say this from the outside as say the NFP, which is a. We, we've had textbook after textbook in the last few years. Last last uh, two weeks ago, I guess, it was fab fabulous, just fabulous. We expected 183. We got 350. It was unbelievable. And, and that and by the way, that train is still in that that trend is still in train. Yeah, yeah. The euro dollars dollars starting to give back a little, but that kind of robust uh, health, that 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 vigorous health, strengthened the dollar. Now, what's going on now? I don't know, but I don't care. The point is, we're going to Watch those markets. Oh, yes, there is one other market I do want to watch. This is that's why again why it's not exactly like um the NFP, where those pairs are pretty much what we do. And many people in, in the NFP over the years ask, well, how to, can I look at gold? Can I look at the S P? I have never seen any correlate, any relationship whatsoever. Um keep in mind we're, we're talking, even though these are the FX markets and these are major pairs, I mean, you know, zillions and trillions and quintillions of dollars traded every day in, in some of these pairs. Euro dollar, are you kidding me? Dollar yen? Uh, how many Toyotas are they buying in the United States every minute? You know what I mean? They're going to pay for those in yen. You get the idea. Um, despite their enormous size, when we talk about a, a, a strength of the dollar, it's, it's integral to the business. The strength of the dollar is far less integral to the value of the S&P. I don't know. 80% of the revenue of most of the Fortune 500 companies comes from within the United States. And of the 20% that, uh, of those that have that foreign revenue, it's do they're dominated by a handful of the giant multinational corporations. 
Obviously, well, I won't go into that that gambit, that corrupt bit of tax evasion. But uh, suffice it to say that uh, the the S and P certainly uh, an index of massive market capitalization is less likely to be utzed any particularly dramatic way either way on, based on a what's likely to be a temporary uh, change in value of the dollar. It's, it's irrelevant to the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy has does not have an export based economy like Germany, like to like Tokyo, like Tokyo as a country. How's that Rand McNally era? Japan, Nippon. Uh, did you did well? Europe's in tough shape. Europe, Europe is. Europe, Germany and uh, and the Great Great Britain are they're in recession. So anyway, these are the S and P dailies. So we, if we will we will keep an eye on this. We will because it does sometimes move it. Unlike again the the the, the, the pure currency trade on the NFP. We might look at the uh, S and P. You know maybe we take a look at the uh, the uh, Nasdaq, the Dow. Less so, but you know, again, we'll keep our eyes on those. Um, let's open the floor to some questions, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody, feel free. Light up here in the meantime. Hi, Hannes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Coming through loud and clear, I presume. Do you watch gold as well? No, but I will. I will. You know, it's it, 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 this is a freestyle event. It's bareback and freestyle. I don't know how much more uh, Wild West you can get, but sure, we can keep our eye on gold. No problem there. As soon as I reset the screens, uh, where's his GC? It's right up there, right up front. We'll go to a one-minute chart again just to keep our hand on the pulse. Sure, no problem. I mean, we can look. Um, it's not going to affect gold or oil, but by all means. Great, Hannes. Thank you. Um, Ruth asks a question. She says, um, hi, PNR. I'll get to your question in a minute. Ruth asks a question. She says, why is it so voodoo-like? You'll have to clarify that, Ruth. I don't know what you mean by that voodoo-like. In the meantime, let's get PNR's question. So I understand this FOMC report. He will not give any qualifications of stats. It's only subjective interpretation of what he says. Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree. That is the correct uh, understanding. And I'm sorry I didn't bring that up sooner. That's why I'm always glad you're in the room, PNR. You asked the, the crucial question. This is not, even if it were, and I, and I was under the mistaken assumption up until a few hours ago that, that it was. I, I was wrong about that. Um, even if it were an announcement, which is what's called an FOMC day. An FOMC day, there are many peak traders in the world, myself included, who just sit on their hands. I do not get involved. I don't want to be part of it. There's way too much nervous nervous activity that I can't predict or even, you know, try to hope to make a dollar from. In fact, I know I'm going to pay into that game if I play during those times. Um So even, to, even to, there's no changes involved. It's, it's staying pretty steady. Inflation is slowly coming down. It does, there's no sign of any great uh, recession where he has to lower interest rates to start goosing the system again. No, no, this is this is a textbook. I, I, I shouldn't say it. I don't want to curse it. But it's a, it's a perfectly managed uh, downshift and then upshift of the economic transmission. Smooth, no gear grinding, no clutch burning, no excess acceleration. No and unnecessary fuel burning. Well done. Clearly, I mean, this is this will go down in history as one of the best managed uh, economic uh, displacements in history. But it ain't over yet. Okay, interest rates are probably going to stay around five for a while because that's where they belong, not necessarily because of any inflation. Inflation is coming down. It's hovers around the, the mid threes now, which is slightly above the two percent target, but way below the ten percent you know level it was come I don't know January March twenty twenty one when the when the when the COVID zillions kicked in. Okay, got about twelve minutes and counting. Um, oh, here, Sivashi says, "What's my take on Nvidia? It's a great long term hold. 
it's a it's a terrific long term hold. In in terms of the immediate once they're going to announce after uh, in a couple of hours that they after the market closes, assuming it's just even reasonably close to what expectations are, ba boom. That's my expectation. I could be wrong, but I don't really. I would be shocked if it didn't go that way. Um, oh, here's Ruth's clarification. She said, "I mean by voodoo, like reading tea leaves." Oh, I think I see your point, ma'am. I'll, I'll tell you. It, the actual the answer is simple. It's a good question. Thank you for asking. Um, what she means is. In a lot of these meetings, in every one of these meetings, not less so today. To be per, to be frank, it's it's today is less important than 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 they were in, in the beginning of twenty one when inflation was clearly bavooming and the interest rates hadn't started to pick up and they weren't sure how long if it's a real bavoom, it's a three month thing. They, that's so they waited and that's, oh, that's there's a huge risk involved in that. But they they played their cards very very well. They didn't you know this guy this guy Powell looks like a regular me looks like Clark Kent. Well, not not in uniform of course when he's at the when he's at the Daily Planet, you know, mild-mannered news report. By the way, Powell is a, is a lawyer by training, remarkably enough. Um, and he's not an academic uh, economist. Uh, these people are very, very s sensitive about rocking the markets. Just like we're here to see if they rock the markets, they're going to do their best not to say anything that rocks the market. Okay, how's that for human, a human endeavor that, you know, looks like NASA is involved, but that's what this is, that's what this is about. Now, if they're going to, he's going to be grilled by some highly intelligent, highly articulate people. And he's going to stand up to that. And he does, he, he will, they all do. And, and I, and I shouldn't say, you know, Mrs. Yellen, you know, for the, for the, for the ladies, Mrs. Yellen was an outstanding um, the chairman, of the chairperson of the Federal Reserve, she made one of the greatest, she made two great contributions in my mind. One is she really helped unify the, the reporting stuff. Britain, when, when we're reporting GDP, for example, we, every, all the majors try to get it, their act together to do it the same week. It's very, very, very helpful for us. Or, 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 or prices, and CPIs, or, or PMIs. You'll notice that it's PMI week. It's it's GDP week. That is enormously helpful because before they did that, it was it was enormously difficult to get your head around. It was too much. And the other thing she contributed to was a very significant simplification of the way they talked. Yes, she's still under the stricture of not saying anything that's going to rattle the markets. No, they don't want to do that. On the other hand. I mentioned Alan Greenspan, who was the secretary under Clinton, under the Bushes, I think even under Obama for a bit, until he nominated Mrs. Yellen. Um, they used to speak in opaque language, and that was really like voodoo tea leaves. I know what Ruth means, voodoo tea leaves. So now we're listening, though he speaks a, he speaks a, a good, honest, straight-shooting you know, no bullshit English, he's still not going to be very explicit. He's going to be implicit. He's going to imply things, and we're going to try to divine something out of his implications. Okay? It's not trading oil, ladies and gentlemen. This is not, this is a one-off event. It's a highly, it's a unique affair. Uh, there's nothing like this. Maybe when the Bank of Japan has their kabuki theater of monetary policy. Another world. I won't go into this. I do not do a broadcast for it. But if you're interested, if you're the kind of person that read, you know, Taipei and Shogun and, you know, the, the Clavel novels about Asia, you could get into it. You could get into it. But for a normal person, it's, it's, it's like Kabuki theater. It's, I, I don't recommend it. Um, so I hope I've answered your question, Ruth. Is it a good idea to have my pension tied up in the to tied up to the S and P five hundred to get modest return to hedge the thirty percent unemployment here in South Africa. Who? Thank you, DD. DD, I have to tell you, while I am the possessor of a, a certification to, to give financial advice, I must tell you that's the kind of question I would refer to an account, a tax account. All I know 
for instance, your question is S and P five hundred is doing very well. Many, I don't know your age, sir. If you're, or ma'am, I don't know who Didi is. Um, the younger you are, the more you want your money exposed to the stock market for the long term. The S and P five hundred is is one of the best, not the best. So yes, by all means. Uh, the the um, I don't know what my pension tied up is. Is that all your pension? Some of your pension. I don't know if you have any pension. If you're just starting a pension, so that would need to be understood to give you a fair answer. And to hedge the thirty percent unemployment here in South Africa, I know this about the the rand. It's 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 blowing away in the wind. It's disappearing. Get the hell out of the rand. Put your money in Kruger rands. Put your money in in anything but that god awful currency that is just. Whispering away. That's about the best I can do for that question, Didi. With your years of experience, how accurate would you say the analysts' ratings are? Gonna let you in a little secret, Savashni. It doesn't matter. Now, I hate that answer. I've always felt that answer was the same as, you know, um, you have to read parents tell you it's none of your business. You know? Or they, they, they blew you off. They give you some bullshit answer. But um, all this game is about is the deviation between the expectation, the, the, the what did you call it, the analyst ratings, and the reality. That deviation is where the, the trade is, where the fun is. Okay? Now, if they're really wrong, it's irrelevant. The deviation was great in whichever you know side of the the zero line, whether it was positive or negative, and it'll have the comment should might. By the way, another risk I didn't mention is that this can go. He can say something very very clearly implying that they feel interest that uh, inflation is stiff, then they're going to have to going to have to raise the interest rate a little more. Now, I mean, he would never say in those words. That's why I could never do his job. But let's say he gives off a signal that's quite, I mean, where's a tie with dollar signs on it? I don't know, some, my, that would be my version of, you know, my idiot version of being the chairman of the Federal Reserve. But um, let's say he does say something, um, and the analysts, and this was a report that the analysts figured zero. That's it. it well, that's not. And all the trade. Oi, the analysts were so wrong. Now, if the deviation is small, uh -huh. deviation is large, that's what matters. They, nobody says, you know, those analysts, they had their heads up their ass again. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. The commentary at, you'll notice, is a long lived profession. The same people have been on Bloomberg's, Bloomberg for the last 20 years, 15 years, uh, and it, forever. I don't know how they keep them from aging. They don't seem to age. But nonetheless, it must be the makeup. I don't know. But these guys never, they're always, they're always working. Okay. T minus six minutes and counting. Let's keep our eyes peeled. We're looking at the, um, we're looking at the gold here, which we don't want to dwell on. We want to make sure. Oh, oh, one thing I, I'm so blabbing away. And I appreciate your question. Thank you all. And I hope I've answered yours. Um, four minutes and counting. Um, we want to go to the trading platform. Okay. We want to be able to, in my case, I like to go to my favorites where I already have the, um, I thought I had, yeah, maybe I don't. Um, if not, I'll just go to Forex, but, you know, I like to, ready to trade the Forex pairs. Oh, maybe I have to log in or refresh, probably that's what I have to do. And feel free. Is cannabis stock still good or was that bubble that has popped as Big Pharma has taken control over that industry? It's been dead. Oh, uh, yeah, Didi, I'd say that. Oh, they're my favorite. Uh, I thought they were. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's entirely true. Cannabis was, the, when cannabis went legal, and, and more importantly than legal, legal was was, a, was a, actually a small technicality. What what put it on the map was it went, it was able to, to join the banking system. It went from being a criminally acquired profit motive, a pro profit enterprise, to being a legitimate profit. They could put their money in a bank. And once that happened, as you say, Big Pharma bought them up, finance bought them up. I don't know, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, private equity, whatever it was. And yes, the, the, those, those stocks are, are, are as boring as watching paint dry. Yeah. Um, 
Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, we're about uh, three minutes away now. Let's get over to the NFP pairs. And those, I just call them NFP pairs because those are the six major trading currencies. And so we get keep on straight. We Aussie dollar, euro dollar, pound dollar. Notice the dollars on the left hand side, the right hand side, meaning that they are the rate currency and their rates are printed on the vertical axis of the graph, the y axis. And the base currency is always one. So it's one Aussie dollar will buy, or one US, or this many US dollars, 65 cents, will buy one Aussie dollar. Okay, with the euro dollar, a dollar and eight cents will buy you one euro. And, op, and, and vice versa. It, it'll cost you 150 100 yen to buy a dollar. Okay? 1.35 loonies, Canadian loony. That's a slang for the Canadian dollar, like Swissy is for the CHF or, or whatever. There must be other ones. Um, okay, we're down to T minus a um, minute and a half now. What weight loss stocks, Eli Lilly, has been looking good? What are your thoughts on weight loss drugs with so many people being very fat? Um. I'll be frank about this. I, 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 and, I, and don't get me wrong. I like pharma stocks. Uh, we did we did well um, with Pfizer during the pandemic. All right, here we go. Something's breaking. Something's happening. Here we go. Dollar yen's go. Uh, dollar yen's going up. Dollar's strong. Now it's a little unlikely. Let's see if there's any results that can be seen from the printout on investing.com. No, no, nothing. Oh, so there hasn't come in for a minute. Okay, this here, yeah, that's exactly what I'm speaking with respect to the nervous energy. Nothing's happening and already. <laughs> What's the excitement about? I don't know. Well, let's refresh this. Maybe it happened four minutes ago. No, I, I don't think so. Yeah, it's still one minute. Sorry. Okay. They're in release, the press conference. If you've got Bloomberg, by the way, you can tune into that and watch it live. I find it a distraction. I prefer to look at the charts. All right. Uh, dollar strong. Dollar strong. That first minute. But again, hey, look, one minute. <laughs> You know, I told you we, we, we ride this baby bareback, but it's not quick draw McGraw. I can't fire a, a weapon that fast riding bareback. I got all I can do to hold on. So that first minute here in the dollar yen and the euro dollar came and went before our eyes. So the dollar yen has is, is got some juice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just as I said, it, that, that's by the way, whenever I trade, so, oh, this looks good. I'll get in. And then and, and that's it. No, but it, it does have juice. Dollar yen is strong. Wow, dollar yen is very strong. Euro dollars, dollars, Jesus, Jesus, looking good, looking good. Is that it? Show over? Yeah, no shows over. Did I mention that as a possible risk outcome? Pardon me for neglecting that. One of the outcomes is this. That's it. That's it. Missed it. It's over. T minus, T plus one minute. And the show's over. Come back to it. Well, I didn't mention that because it's so disappointing. But you can see it's a, it's a bummer. It's a drag. What can we do now? Oh, yes, I was talking about the weight loss. I get back to Didi's question, weight loss stocks. Okay, wait a minute. It may have been just a little pause. Ooh, hard to know. Nope, not so hard to know. Nada. Anybody get in on this? Anybody making any money at all on this? 
You'd have to be quick draw McGraw. You would have to have had plays. By the way, notice that the amateurs driving it up in those last few minutes were wrong. You know what I mean? They, 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 I don't know what they would think. No, why bother trying to figure out what they were thinking? They're always wrong. Oh, yeah, the weight loss drugs. To me, D.D., it's, it's like min minoxidil, the, the then holy grail of, of pharmacology was a hair, a hair, a hair grower, like a, like a hormone powder you, you root plants in uh, when you take cuttings. This was supposed to do the same thing for your hair. <laughs> yeah, it does work, and apparently 10 to 12% of, of males, it, it, it has some next to useless effect. But these people are so desperate. They'll pay anything for even a little hope. Okay, so did it work though? Did it was it the big money spinner that they thought? No, it's in the bottom shelf in the drugstore next to the next to the the body weight scales. You know, it, it's not a hot item. I think the same is going to be with this stuff. All right. Well, now what's going on? Now we get a reversal. Well, it's the roller coaster. Well, and I didn't mention this out possible outcome either. Please forgive me for that. The fake, the the the, the head fake. Ooh, and it's a nice one too. Jeez, you'd have to be quick. You'd have to be quick. But I I I, I want to say just just to prove a point. Let's go short dollar yen. I want to show you how real. Oh, I see my favorites don't come up. Isn't that annoying? I could have rebooted or something. It's dollar yen. I want to sell dollar yen at the moment. Yen is getting strong. I just want to be in for a minute. Okay. Notice oh, trade disabled. What do you mean trade disabled? Oh, I'm the wrong thing. Uh, well. Right. See if it'll authorize it now. I see now you got to make sure it switches around. You got to keep your head screwed on when you're trading. Dollar yen. Go one lot short. Come on, come on. I got in late already. Order processing. Okay. I do want to show you that the fills are good. <laughs> the execution stunk, but the fill was good. Let's see if it hits that. Notice no stops on this. There's, there's way, way, way too much volatility even to pretend I could calculate any meaningful kind of stop on this. Certainly in a one-minute chart, as you can see, it's all over. I would either never get stopped out and, and just be riding the roller coaster, or I would get immediately stopped out and have to keep getting in. Brilliant, brilliant dollar yen trade. No, no, that was a that was a big winner. But what I really wanted to show more than actually, I'm hoping to make money always, but was that the execution is very smooth. We have um, high-grade uh, uh, servers that do our dealing, and they're very reliable. I have not ever seen a glitch, a hang-up. Not that this is so demanding on the system, but I have seen, been in situations where I have seen huge demand, and the system handles it you know, beautifully. So any more questions? We can open, open up the floor to more questions, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free. I don't know how long I'm going to stick around. Usually, you know, if, if, there, if there was a definitive trend, which you can clearly see it's not, it's, all of them are pretty much exactly where they were when the trade, when, the, when, the, when whatever was happening. Like. However, I point out that while the show seems to be a, a sort of like a, a kiddie roller coaster, it's not a real roller coaster, but it's, I don't know, for most people, for me anyway, um, this, is, this, this is not going to be over in 15 minutes. He's delivering speeches now. He's delivering words. He's a prepared you know, speech. But the fun and games begin when he starts to get needled. That'll take place probably in the next uh, five to ten minutes. And so in the meantime, we can open the floor to questions. Dollar is starting to weaken, rates coming down. No, no, DD, in my opinion, again, I, I, I'm not privy to this and I'm not listening to the notes, um, but sometimes you don't have to. You know, you know, if, if you follow the story, if you, if you, if you view 
uh, the economic and financial world, stock or capital markets world, let's say, to be, to be clear about it, as an ongoing saga. And you, you don't maybe read every, I take the weekends off and do my homework, and, but I'm, you know, I'm not glued. I, I once knew a guy when I was in my Wall Street days, it was so insane. These were in the days where you know, we didn't have online. This week. The best you could have was what was called a Reuters screen, a little screen about this big with, a, with one line of text rolling across it. That wasn't a big font, just one line of text, $2,000 a month. He had one in his toilet, okay? He was nuts. He was absolutely nuts. I won't mention his name. I don't think he's listening, but... He was the most a, a crazed trader I ever met. But um, sometimes you don't need to, to get updated on every installment. These days, inflation is, is pretty calm. It's, not, it's, it's above target, so it's not likely to lower the interest rate. There's no recession on the horizon, despite the, 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 the vigorous, robust job market in the United States. It's just no, there's no, yes, there's wage inflation, which is a great thing. Wage inflation reduces the income gap, and we're happy to let wage inflation fly. It's a good thing for everybody. All democratic economies need wage inflation. The concentration of wealth in the, uh, um, among the elites is getting to the point where it's, it's becoming politically risky. And they're aware of that. But because the, the U.S. Congress is so corrupted in the, in the back pockets of, 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 the, of, of whoever bought them off, uh, there is no fair taxation system. And so a lot of America's taxes are paid for by the, the, the not, not the wealthy, the middle class. And it's become untenable. So, yes, there's wage inflation. It's a good thing. Um, you focused on dollar yen initially. Is that because you see it as an indicator for other pairs? No. No, Michael, it's not. It's because it was, a, it was the one on the move the most. I misexecuted because I, I, I committed a classic error. And you can see, you have to keep your head on tight during these, these live events. I've done a million of them. I, I, and trust me, I, uh, when I set this up, obviously, too long ago, I, re, I um, re-logged into the, to the uh, system. I was logged in. I, everything's ready to go. I saw my favorites. I don't know what happened to them. But... Um, Time had elapsed, excessive time had elapsed. That that five seconds was the difference between maybe making a couple of dollars and this idiotic loss I'm bearing now, which I will free myself of perhaps as soon as I get gets anywhere close to my entry point. I'm getting the hell out. Um, that's the only reason, Michael. There was no I follow I focus on these six because they are the most likely to move. These are the heavyweights. These are the these are the these are the you know. Have, these are the serious currency pairs. These are the ones, you know, with this liquidity and, and depth and breadth of market. I can get a fill quick, easy. I hope I've answered your question, too. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe I could be wrong about this, but there may be a little survey. Uh, I think it's called a survey at the end of the session. Please take a minute and fill it out. It helps us uh, choose topics. Um, focus in on what's good for you when you'd like to have. It gives you a say in what the hell is going on here. Um, and um, it helps us plan our uh, our, our sessions to, to, to fit the popular demand. So please take a minute to help. It'd be very helpful for us. Surely, Michael, my pleasure. Yeah, so this, the nature of what's going on in these charts, and let's take a look just, just to relieve the unbearable boredom, boredom here. Gold is on the minute chart. Zil, Zilcherini, nothing there on the gold chart. Um, the indices, oh, we're in the daily. Let's go down to the minute. Why not? Let's live. Oh, well, there was a little something there. It's a little something there from 49.50 to 49.80. And it's holding steady. That that's kept up. Uh, where's your Dow? Your Dow uh, go in the go in the minute charts here. Where is the um, one hundred? Uh, he's the Nasdaq one hundred. Go to the minute. Oh, sorry, one minute. Uh, yeah, there's that same pop on the Nasdaq. Oh, am I on the Dow? Yeah, the one minute. There was, yeah, the same part. They all popped the same. They all reacted identically. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not that good. 
I, in fact, not only I'm not that good, I, I don't even want to get involved in something like that because I don't know where it can go. And if I got in, which I, if I, let's say the optimal case, I got in right about here. Uh, am I making any money? No. Am I doing as poorly as I am in that dopey in position? No. But again, that assumes I would be able to get in here. I probably even couldn't do that. I'm just not that quick anymore. I used to be really quick on the mouse finger. I'm not. And so I, I, I'm not looking for trades that I need to be quick draw McGraw to make any money on. I'm looking for something with a little more legs. What's up with palladium in general, asks Neil. Well, that's palladium in general. That's a question you don't get every day, ladies and gentlemen. But let's indulge Neil and talk palladium. Let's go. It's a one minute on the gold zipper Um Palladium, palladium's principal industrial, palladium is, a, is, is technically a precious metal. And um, let's go back to the currencies just to, to, to monitor to see if there's anything really to watch. And if there isn't, ladies and gentlemen, I won't belabor this. I, I will be, you know, signing off soon. Oh, no. Huh? Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe there's, there's hope for that yen position yet. Um, oh, yes. I, I, I'll, get, I'll get to your question in a moment. Neil and Kyle has a question also. I'll get to both of them in a moment. Um, you can see by this chart, this 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 little roller, it's a mini roller, because it's a kitty roller coaster. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not a, a big it's not the NFP two weeks ago, okay? But the NFP like two weeks ago happens maybe once in a year or more. This is a high this this looks like a person's chart on a hospital, in a hospital ward. They're emotionally high, they're emotionally low, they're up, they're low, their their pulse weakens. That's because this is a highly personal event. Okay. We're watching Mr. Powell sort of wink and hint and, 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 and signal, but in a, in a discreet and, 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 and subtle way. And so, it, so you can see it's, 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 it's emotional. It's emo ah, 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 ah. Not for everyone, not for everyone. But for some people, like me, I find this fascinating. I, I find this kind of trading very interesting. So once... It was still 15, 12 minutes into this. Any 50, 20 minutes he's done for sure. I mean, even in the darkest days of 2021, when, when they were just, you know, shooting in the dark, literally not knowing what they were going to do. Um, he went 20 minutes. Now he's not going to go 20 minutes. There's not so much to talk about. I know what the inflation is doing. You all, and by the way, how do you know? We're not privy to the exact mother load of information that he is or she is, but we know enough of the storyline that we, you know, if you, if you follow the reports every week that, GDP and the unemployment and the, the, the interest rate and the uh, inflation. That's all you need to know. Okay, it, it doesn't take a long time. It's not like reading a serialized novel in the newspapers. You know, Charles Dickens' famous novels, they did my, some of my favorites growing up as a kid, did, did David Copperfield, I must have read that three times in my life. Huge tome of, of the bleak, dark, mid, you know, Victorian child abusive industrial policy. But Dickens, Dickens is Dickens. Um, was serialized in a newspaper before it was published in book form. So people read a chapter or two every week for, for, for a long time. It sold a lot of papers. But we should go back to something like that. The papers need help. Um, so this represents that up and down, you know, is this is tie this way? Did Mrs. Yellen wear the pin here? Did she wear the yellow alligator, the pink flamingo, whatever it is? That, that's the kind of voodoo. That's what Ruth had asked in her early question. The voodoo, why is it so voodoo-like? This is why it's so voodoo-like. She was absolutely right. Um, Kyle asks, if you have open NFP trades during the time of the impending NVIDIA fluctuation, will you open your NFP trades, be affected? Sorry, I'm new to trading. Uh, you, don't be sorry. Lots of us are new to trading. In fact, old hands like me are always new. I'm always learning something new. That is one of the fascinating parts of this business, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it, investing is, you just give it to somebody who do, all, all she does is put your money in the, in, in, into the S&P 500 and she goes to sleep. And then you call her in 30 years and say, I'd like more money than I put in back. And she'll say, okay, you got it. That's, that's not what we're about. We're about this business. Um, and if you're the type of person that likes to be well informed, and, and it does require reading, don't get me wrong, I said it's easy to keep up with the storyline, which is true. But those of us who are willing to devote more time and acquire more knowledge have much more power in this market. This is the classic example of a business where knowledge is power. So if you like to read, if you like to read up on it, here's where you can turn that into a few dollars. Um, the answer to your question is no, Kyle. NFP trades that are still open, and I know exactly what he's talking about. The dollar popped up so strongly that those trades are still in the money. 
uh, including the, the the outrageous you know cost of holding them over the weekend, they're still making money despite that. So that's not an everyday affair. And you're right to hold on to them, sir. I don't think this. There's no way this would be a problem. I mean, here you see, if if I go, if I here, take take an active chart like that, if I go back to the uh, one hour, I mean, you know, one hour on, on the yen chart, okay, it's not doing anything. The four hour, you won't even see this effect. <laughs> Zippo. Okay. The only reason it seems like so much fun is because we're looking at a minute chart. That's why it is fun, by the way. You can get in, you can play with a few dollars, you don't have to take a big position, and it's a fun ride, to my way of thinking. Call me a juvenile delinquent, but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. There's no reason that you can't have fun and enjoyment here. Uh, in this case, my enjoyment might be just reducing my loss, but, you know, you, you get your pleasure where you find it. Um, so that's your answer, I hope, Kyle. Pianar asks, no use for palladium anymore, not with EV cars on the rise, no need for catalytic converters. That's correct. Oh, he, PNR is asking, answering Neil's question. That's correct, sir. That's exactly the answer I would have given. Palladium, though a precious metal having some industrial uses, it's used in tooth filling sometimes. It's definitely uh, used in, in expensive and rare jewelry. Um, but most of it is used to coat the honeycomb structure within a catalytic converter in benzene or gasoline burning uh, vehicles, internal combustion engines. They somehow magically convert expensively, by the way, this, it, 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 palladium is very, very expensive. They, it somehow converts the worst poisons that come out of the combustion process into something that's neutralized. It's, it's not even CO2. It doesn't treat CO2, but this stuff, this is, this stuff is, the, is the nitrogen family. This is crap that will kill you. If it gets out, if enough of it accumulates like it did in the Los Angeles basin that created the famous smog of the 1950s and 60s and 70s, um, that stuff will kill you. So it, it, it effectively, effect, fairly effectively, I don't know exactly how effectively, but obviously effectively enough to up the price of a car by easily three, four hundred dollars. Did I say that? I meant fifteen hundred dollars for some of these converters because it's not only palladium, there's, there's rhodium, there's uh, uh, platinum. It's all sorts of uh, expensive shit. And, and I understand there's a, not surprisingly, in the enterprising city of New York, a, uh, the cottage industry of ripping these out of cars and taking them to some smelting plant and and, 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 and recovering the uh, precious metal. Thoughts on NVIDIA, Antoinette says, asks, have they uh, reported out or do you just want my general thoughts? Let's assume they haven't reported. No, I know they haven't reported out. They, they report out after the market. Market closes in another hour and uh, 41 minutes in New York, anyway. Um, look, NVIDIA is a phenomenon, a rare phenomenon. Um, not too long ago, the undisputed heavyweight champion of chip making was a corporation called Intel. And not only were the undisputed champion by a, by a country mile, they had no rival, period. Everybody else, they were so dominant that the only other businesses to go into, if you wanted to go into the chip foundry business, and that's what the plants are called, they're called fabrication plants or fabs or chip foundries. and Nowadays, they cost $10 billion to build each one. That's right. B with a billions with a B. When I had, I worked uh, with the Intel Corporation for extensively for some time in my early career. Uh, they cost $2 billion to set up. They're extraordinarily, extraordinarily fascinating. It's the most complicated human endeavor, industrial endeavor we undertake. Well, but that's no longer true. Intel is making chips for washing machines and dryers now, and NVIDIA is making the power chips. Now, NVIDIA, just to refresh your memories, uh, we can take our eyes off this chart. So let's go to a chart of NVIDIA. Um, one of my all-time favorites, British Aerospace. Who oh, is NVIDIA? Oh, because I'm in the season dead. You have to go to equities. You're supposed to know your system. Wow. NVIDIA. Um, and it's showing another asset that I don't think that's, that's just forget that. We'll get rid of that. Um, this, by the way, is TradingView, ladies and gentlemen. TradingView is the Rolls-Royce 
uh, free charting software on the internet. That's not a paid advertisement. I'm a, in fact, I'm a paying customer to them. I have an account to just to be available to myself of this particular indicator, which is not necessary in any way, shape, or form. I've just grown used to it over the years as a unnecessary as a useful crutch. Here's Nvidia. This is like I don't know. It's five hundred percent. Just I don't know something like that. No, for four hundred and sixty-one percent. Okay, to today's close, and that includes the drop off. Up to here, it's like five hundred and three percent this morning. That's a four-day chart, so it could, that couldn't be true. Let's go to a one-hour chart, a uh, one-day chart. Rather. By the way, just a little charting information. Let's go back to our screens, make sure we're not missing any action. No, no, I don't think so. Um, this is your most important tool you have in your trading bag, including fundamentals, and it's this. It's the, it's the what I like to call the focal length, the magnification. How 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 what is the length of the what is the time interval that each candlestick represents if you see a trend that's and you want to trade say an hourly trade you got an hour you want you want to see if you can make some money in nvidia look at the hourly thing if it's up great that, that's good but what you do to give yourself a slight edge is to look at the 30 minute and look at the four hour if that trend is the same in those three time frames you're more likely to be right on a short term up long position obviously the same thing on a short so this ability to go from a day to four hours, which is a favorite of mine, to one hour, so the trend is down. Now, certainly in the one now, obviously in the 30 minute, it's going to be steeply down. My that trend is confirmed. Now you see in the last three minutes, you can, by the way, in a, in, in an option that I don't. Oh, I can go to one minute. Let's go to one minute chart. See, hey, in the one minute now. But no, you see, and this probably is is, is whatever's going on at the. Uh, I, I don't know. No, I take that back. It's nothing to do with it. The people buying and selling Nvidia are not watching Mr. Powell. I assure you of that. Um, that. So those are my thoughts on Nvidia, Antoinette. I, I hope I've answered your question. I, I, I tend to ramble with that a little bit. Uh, Didi asked, "Is there a real shortage of bombs?" Yeah, yeah, there is. That is why. That is why this is this is so outstanding. Let me get rid of it. I, I, this is a Lockheed Martin imprinted on top of British Aerospace. And the only reason I, I I prefer British Aerospace is because it's cheaper. Lockheed Martin's a very expensive uh, stock uh, to trade, and British Air oh I'm sorry, British Aerospace is more affordable, but and it's actually trading a better chart pattern. Let me get rid of this as well. Um. It's above the fifth, the two hundred, the twenty, the the fifty, the twenty moving average, EMA, exponential moving average. Those are important mathematical signs, and that is because price is just what it is right now. It's twelve forty one fifty. All you know about twelve forty one fifty is that it changed hands at that price. Did the buyer get a bargain? Was the seller abused? Did the seller did the seller take advantage of the buyer? We don't know. You only know in relation to value. Value is simply price over time. So the value of British aeros British aerospace systems, I, everything's a system now. Ordnance, they, they even have in the name. Or, oh no, that's something. That's not ordnance. My mistake. That, that's a trading symbol, I think, in the uh, ETF world or something. Um, ordinary shares, maybe. I don't know. Um, the market values the price. More than it has in the last 20, let's let's speak in days, so we'll go to a daily chart. 20 days, 50 days, 20 days is about a month, by the way, five day trading days a week, 50 days, about a quarter, and 200 days, about a year. The market has a very high estimation of this stock, way more than it has had in the last year, way more. You see my point? It now estimates the value at 16.43% more than it did a year ago. 16.3%. That, that's better than the S&P's done. And one of the reasons for that, DD, is because they're running out of ammo. Since the end of the Cold War, the Western powers, the NATO powers, um, have produced only enough weaponry for training purposes. 
the fear and the threat of a, of a, of a heavy duty artillery dual war with the Russians was dead and buried, thank God. So they, would, they haven't been ready for this. The Russians, of course, it, ironically enough, it's the very Russians that they're fighting, um, did manage to launch a, a, a serious uh, assault on Ukraine. And they're now using weaponry in the uh, order of magnitude that they used in, in Vietnam and in, in, maybe even the Second World War to a certain degree. Tens of thousands of shells a month, just hundreds of thousands of shells a month, tens of thousands of shells a week. They're using more in a month than they're able to produce in over a year. So what that means is that they're supplying the, uh, the Ukrainians with um, ordnance from active units. Those units can't sit around for too long being uh, uh, under, under uh, in with, uh, with an ammo shortage. They've got to be re re rearmed. Otherwise, they're sitting ducks. Well, this stuff can't, this stuff is not acquired at Costco or, or Carrefour or, or, or any, this stuff is acquired by British Aerospace and Lockheed Martin. People, and Uncle Sam and, 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 and the King of England don't say, hey, wait a minute, it's a little pricey. No, they don't say that. Just say, bring them on. Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's $500,000 a cruise missile. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll take 10000 Okay, so, okay, I, I rest my case. Great long-term buy. And it's and it's and it's a, it's even cheap. It's a little cheaper than uh, a lot cheaper than Lockheed Martin. Is orange juice a good trade? I don't know. I haven't looked at orange juice in years, Didi. Let's take a look at the commodities. Oh, oh, let's just see if it's time to end, ladies and gentlemen. That's really what we need to consider here. Okay. Oh, oh! It looks like my yen position is going to be redeemed. I had to open my mouth. Every time I open my mouth, the market says, "Oh, oh, he's getting a little, he's getting a little hot. He seems to think he knows what he's doing." I never learn. Anyway, um, let's just take a a look up at this five minutes and see if there's really anything to this at all. Yeah, you can sort of see it. Let's see, we're what T plus thirty minutes now. So five, ten, fifty, twenty. So this is the that first bar with the tails is that was the, was the action packed drama. Thirty minute shot that's barely visible. Zippo, zip tied. Okay, well I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. You're not going to be reading too much about this in tomorrow's papers. That I can assure you. Um, but oh, let's take a look at orange juice for Didi. Orange juice is a great trade. By the way, what, 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 what's so appealing? About I like coffee these days more, Didi, is the truth of it. I have traded orange juice in my day. Um, but what's beautiful about these, these particular field crops is that from a horticultural point of view, they're very temperamental bushes. Oh, no, the, the, the orange, orange, oranges grow on trees, actually. Those are trees uh, cultivated in bizarre ways, by the way, to maximize the yield. And uh, coffee, of course, is, is indeed a bush, a very temperamental bush. Very sensitive bush. She can be infect, uh, infected by, by, oh, too much moisture, too much dryness, too much dryness in the wrong time, too much sun at the right. Very, very temperamental um, piece of, uh, of horticulture. And so much so in the case of the coffee's sensitivity that her buds, if they damage it at the, the, the wrong time, they will not only affect that year's yield, they'll affect the next year's yield. How do you like that for a trade that's going to stay in train? I mean, here. I'm, Didi asked me about orange juice, and I, and I wax lyrical about um, coffee. Coffee had been a great trade back in uh, 2020, 2021. I'll just show it to you. Why not? Go to a monthly chart. I have to go back a little while. See it? This is it. This is this is the run-up. Let's, let's get some dates on this. This is a monthly chart. It's a to see. It starts to run up around uh, 2020 and peaks out around 2021. The end of 2020. No, the end of January. It's about a year. It runs. I was wrong. It's not 2020. 2020. It's a beautiful thing, right? Because we knew, and that's that's one of the reasons. Um, Didi may be asking about orange juice. That's one of the reasons. All you have to do to know what's going on in these babies is to read the weather reports. Can, can, can you do that? Do you need an advanced education in in, in finance and economics to, to read that the weather in the Arabica growing region in Brazil is is too hot? Nah, now you can subscribe to free journals that are dedicated to only coffee, tea, and cocoa. You read anything you want. It's easy. So let's take a look at the orange juice for DD. Oh, what do they call it? Orange, that's what it's called. 
an hourly. She's looking at a daily chart. I like to start with a daily. It gives me the big picture. Um, keep in mind, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that this, this is a seasonal crop. So there's a seasonality in these things that you have to be aware of when you trade field crops. You know, they go up. The, the contract, these contracts roll over probably every, I don't know, 90 days, maybe 120 days. And uh, uh, some of them roll over in different times. During the um, harvest season, there are more contracts. So you have to know the particulars of the of the, of the, the beast. Uh, we see that there's been a big move. Let's go to the let's go to the better charting program. We'll go to uh, commodities. I don't even know if I have orange juice here. No, let's let's you, you, here's again beautiful. Right, all I do is type in orange or OJ. Frozen concentrate orange juice on the ice on the ICE exchange. Voila! How do you like that? I love that. Okay, so let's take a look at orange juice on the daily. You know, this is what we saw before, but we can we can measure things now. We've got better tools. Our trading platform uh, it, it is uh, an excellent trading platform in terms of execution, in terms of the ability to put your stops in when you want, recalculate them, move them up, move them down, keep your pro lock in profit. Fabulous, smooth as silk. Charting not so much, and that's okay. Most people I've had trading accounts at many many houses over the years. Uh, none of them really. You, nobody, nobody trades on the house. You know, nobody does their charting work on the house uh, charting system. They, they trade on the house trading system, but you, you need a better chart usually than the house provides. So, I recommend trading view. So, what are you thinking about, Didi? You thinking about buying OJ here? It's above the twenty-day moving average. It's above the fifty-day, well above the two hundred-day moving average. Think this trend is going to continue? The market does. The volume is behind you. This is something, this is a tool I use constantly. Pairing the volume with the price movement. If there's a lot of price movement, like here, it goes up steeply, but there's not a lot of volume. It happens to be below the average volume. I just imposed the, the volume. This, is, by the way, is not an indicator. This, this is published by the market. Open, high, low, close, and volume are the five data points that the markets uh, sell you when you buy their quotes. This is not an indicator. This is this is a this is a a, a a legitimate statistic provided by the marketplace. Uh, and all the green and the red means that there was more selling in the case of green than buying, and vice versa. When I see a trend that's steeply up on low volume, I know it's not serious. And uh, I knew it was not serious here before it fell. The, assuming that the chart was here, assuming the charts here, and this is the left edge, I can tell. Uh, I'm, I can't really tell. Them. Sorry about that. Can't see. Okay, uh, so so it would be here, and say I didn't see this part. You can tell that the volume to the left of the dotted line is below below average. So there seems to be more volume on this little upswing. What are you going to do, Didi? What's your plan? Oh, Didi's full of questions today. Jeez, stock buybacks. What does that mean? Easy, I'll tell you in a second. Energy stocks are good. Energy stocks are great. Energy stocks are great. I hate to say it. Nobody, we're all, we're all, I was going to say fed up. We're all choking to death and killing ourselves and killing Mother Earth in the process by burning shit. It's enough already. We, we have to stop burning shit to, to, to do everything we do. Every piece of plastic, every trip we take, every single piece of everything we wear is, is, is made out of oil. It's enough already with the oil. It's, it's killing us. Um, however, we don't have a viable alternative yet. Don't be fooled into the, 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 the electric and the solar and the wind and all that stuff. There's no batteries. Until it's decent battery technology, that stuff is nonsense. It's child's play. We have to we have to invest heavily in nuclear because it's reliable. Because what we're doing is we have all these fuck there wind farms and solar fields, and it looks like we're very green. Except they they only provide the marginal power. What they call the base load, the amount of power you need constantly, is not provided by wind, solar. And there's not wind all the time. Solar. It's nighttime. Not at nighttime. No solar at nighttime. Until we have batteries to store the excess, eh, no solar. So the base load is provided by, you ready for this? You greens, ready, ready? Coal, no, and, and, and oil, and coal and natural gas. In the United States, uh, I think only about 10% of the energy is provided by nuclear. France, it's, it's over 80%. But the French are well, well advanced in nuclear technology. Anyway, so energy companies are good, DD. Energy companies are good. Stock buybacks are a... Well, I'll tell you this, this, the, the textbook answer, and I'll tell you what I think. No, you know what? The hell with that. I'll tell you what I think first. 
I think it's a, I think it's crooked capitalism. My opinion, I could be wrong. What it means is, company has excess cash, paid excess capital, and they want to put it to use. What they normally do is do what they do best. So if you're Rolls Royce, you make another production line. You'll make more engines. If you're if you're a Prada, you'll you'll think of some other retarded bag to sell for ten million dollars. Whatever it is, you'll you'll invest in making more of them and then making them better and making them cheaper so you make more money. More or less, that's the essence of capitalist investment strategy. However, sometimes the the, the stewards of a corporation, it's 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 its board of directors, decides that the best use of their capital is to put it in the pockets of the stack of the shareholders. Odd position to argue with, right? Goes right into my pocket. So I'm holding 100 shares of uh, NVIDIA. I bought a Tesla. And uh, they're going to buy them back from me. And it, it may be more, way more than I paid for them. I'm taking the offer. So it does two things. It distributes capital, come corporate profits, back into the, hand, the pockets of the shareholders. Not necessarily a bad thing. I don't say that's the bad part. Um, and it raises the price of the stock because there's less shares out there. It, it, it's the opposite of sell, selling more shares and, and, and causing what's called a dilution of stock, making each share usually worth less. By buying them back, they make them worth more, thereby appearing to be more valuable. That's the sort of the smarmy part, okay? Well, there's two smarmy parts. It's that accounting jig, which nobody likes. I don't like accounting jigs. and. The fact that they can't think of a bet, that they're not, they, the best thing they can do is to give it back. That does not ring of a dynamic management approach. My way of thinking, I could be wrong. My, my two cents. Um, I'm thinking about transferring my pension and diversifying it into the assets here under discussion. Well, Didi, oh, you wouldn't really necessarily be diversifying them because I assume that your pension fund is also invested in the same stuff. There's only so many games in town. Um, and, and while we, at our house, we offer you a, a plethora of, of different options, um, other houses also do too. Wow, this is really going a long time. I, I realize I have to be cutting this short. Let's just take um, another look at, the, at what's going on. Go back to, uh, let's see, the uh, what was it, the uh, pairs? Nah. <laughs> Yen trade underwater. Forget that. I'm getting out of that right now. Let's end that before it gets too out of control. Um, close this right out. Moderate loss of $81. That's okay. Yes. Um, well, let, let's. I, I'm going to bring this to an end. So let, let's do that now. Um, in terms of j just to answer Didi's question about the pension plan. Your pension funds are probably in most of this. I don't know what percentage. I don't know how they manage. You know that better than I do. But I caution you. Most, what they mostly don't do is trade. If you're taking your pension, all of your pension money out and, and trading it, you are subjecting yourself to a terrific risk. And you're not a professional money manager. The people that manage your pension funds are. And it, yes, they have bad years. They're not all geniuses. Some of them go bust. Some of them lose money, a lot of money. I lose money. I don't have every year of my life has not been a winning year, okay? I promise you that. But I have put three kids through college, one through a very expensive graduate program, and uh, it, it, it can provide a, a very comfortable living if you enjoy this kind of work. But I, I think I've mentioned this to you. I mentioned this to certain clients over the years. As I, saw them. I lost my trading account three times in my life, twice with quite sizable sums of money. Until I learned the ropes. The, the tuition here is expensive. This stuff is not tied to schools. You have to learn it the hard way. Why? Because it's personal. It's all about how I deal with it, not how you deal with it. There's no way. How do you deal with that when fear grips you? What do you do? What do you do when you when you get euphoric about gains and law? What if you get excited? Don't think this is easy to master because it ain't. And you taking your pension money and, 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 and spending it on tuition at this academy might be a regrettable decision, Didi. Be prudent. Be cautious. There's risk here. Doesn't always wear a familiar face. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that on that dark note, but dark, but but you know, deliberate note. Um, 
Why do countries increase tax on income? Because it's easy, because they can get away with it. Didi, I have to ask you to attend the next session. You're a terrific guest, and, a, and it's a pleasure to have you. But uh, we do have to bring the proceedings to a close. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, let me say that on behalf of the staff and the management here at Bank So Trading, we are always humbled and deeply gratified by your patronage of us as your online trading broker. We do the best we can for you. This, um, uh, this, this, this is an example of, of, of the kind of work we do. We hope it's been edifying and enlightening. Um, and we will, um, and, and this is what we do for our clients. So please avail yourselves. Please join in for the sessions. Please call your brokers and ask them how you can do what we did today. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Seth, Nels, Seth Julian, wishing you all the ability to trade with confidence, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye for now. My pleasure, Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment.